Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome back to the series where I teach you how to analyze and visualize data in Python. Today we're talking about imputing missing values in our data. And that's probably a new word to a lot of you, so I will quickly explain what it means before we get into it. To impute missing values is to fill in the missing values. So if there's any uh, values that are completely gone from the data set, we can use a, a method called imputation. There are a few different ways of doing it, but I'll just show you one in particular where you can calculate uh, what the missing values could be and then uh, re-implant them into the data set. This is of course particularly helpful in situations where you don't have all the data and you want as much data as possible because it's always good to have as much data as possible and it's better to estimate these values than it is to just get rid of them entirely. Unless of course most of the data set is missing in which case you probably want a new one. Of course if you find the video helpful at any point then consider liking it to let me know and subscribing so you don't miss out on new videos in the series. But yeah with that out of the way let's get into it. So we're back here with these two cells. However, we are going to be making uh, a number of different changes. We are going to be doing one extra import and we're going to be changing the data set. But first I want to actually show you um, what we're actually going to be doing or show you the problem uh, that we're going to be solving. So if I load this minimal 2021, it's the same as minimal 2020, except it's just 2021's data. However, the one difference is that you can see that the we have some missing data on the dislike. So what I've uh, done here is I've gone through and I've just removed all the zeros um, essentially uh, from this data set. However, if you load them into pandas, they will actually return as a not a number value and be counted as missing. So what we're going to be doing is imputing these missing values. Now imputing in this sense essentially just means to work out what value should go here and then add them. And there are a number of different you know ways you can do this. So the easiest and simplest way is to just add uh, a load of zeros. Uh, into here and of course in this case all we've done is remove zero so that would be the best way in this one particular instance have if we assume that we don't know what values would have gone here then there are better ways of course of doing that and I'm going to be showing you one of the easier ways um, of doing that and that is to calculate the mean of a column and implant that into every single row with a missing bit of data so with that we come back to our thing and we um Okay, but I just love that complicated explanation of go back to our thing. Yeah, well done. Uh, well done me indeed. So we changed to our minimal 2021 CSV, so we actually load in the right one. And we actually need uh, from sklearn, so you should have uh, installed that earlier. This would be installed as scikit-learn uh, in pip, however you import it as sklearn. Uh, you from uh, sklearn.impute import simple uh, imputer. Now there is uh, an iterative imputer, and if you want to enable that, you have to do some weird stuff. So you have to include um, uh, this line if you want to enable it, and then you can import it uh, like this. However, in my testing, the iterative imputer didn't really seem to do anything different from the simple one. Perhaps my data was too simple, perhaps in an enormous data set with huge amounts of variation, then the iterative imputer would be a um, would be better to use but the uh, the actual usage as far as I can tell is extremely similar uh, so if you do want to mess around with that you can however I'm not going to do that in this uh, video we're just going to stick with a simple one uh, because as I said there isn't a huge difference as far as I can tell between the two and you know I just kind of want to explain what imputing is because this is kind of aimed at people that don't know what that means so if we load that up, uh, we can see that we have this nan, nan, and nan value. Uh, now this nan stands for not a number and is essentially represented as a missing value. I believe if you had like a string in, a, in an int64 or float64 column, it would also appear as a not a number. Um, but it's essentially just treated by pandas as a missing value. So in order to impute, we actually need to create a new cell, and I'm going to create a function uh, in a cell. So we're going to call it a simple impute, uh, and then we're going to uh, pass our data frame into it. And we're going to call a, uh, our simple imputer, and we're going to call it imp. Uh, so this just creates the, the object itself. And then we do uh, imp uh, dot fit, and then you pass in the data that you actually want to put into it. However, this is where things get a bit weird because we have a day column. And of course, day column is not a numerical column um, because we convert it to a date time. And it wasn't a numerical column to begin with because it was a string. So we actually 
need to uh, specify a range of columns which we need to actually impute. So we're going to put df.iloc um, and we're going to put a colon to represent uh, every row and then a uh, column. So essentially we are passing in uh, every row of all but the zeroth column, which is the day column. And that will go in and that will um, essentially impute the missing values for all of those cells. Uh, so now we can do, actually no, sorry, it's imp.transform that actually does that. Uh, the iloc. So I, I believe you need to call it separately because it uses some weird implementation of it, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so you need to fit the uh, the imputer to the data first, and then you need to transform it later, and then you get given this uh, uh, data as a return value. And then we need to create a new data frame. Uh, so do pd dot uh, data frame. You need to pass in data, and then we need to do uh, df dot columns. Oh, sorry, columns dot df dot columns. So we're now um, re-adding the old columns. We need to do column one onwards. Uh, index equals df dot iloc, uh, and then zero, and then dot reset index. So there's quite a lot um, in there, but if we run that, it will create the function in memory. And then we could do uh, simply df2 equals simple impute uh, df, and then df2.head. And you'll see that our values are actually in place. So the simple imputer takes the strategy as mean um, by default. You can change that here, I think. Strategy, I forget what the values actually are. I think median is one of them. Let's have a look real quick. It is. Okay, so the median in this case is one. Uh, and then if we set it back to mean, which is the default, I'll just run all of these down, we get 1.309 because it's calculating the mean of uh, our dislikes. And there isn't really that much to choose from, um, but it just calculates the mean as 1.309 and it will import and then it will put that um, everywhere. Uh, it's not callable in the data. So you can see there's an instance down here, there's an instance down here as well. Uh, so it just kind of pops that everywhere, um, really. And then our reset index here is just to prevent some issues. So I think if I if I run this again, we'll see. Oh yeah, just kind of uh, because the day um, is like set as the index. I think we do that here, but we actually need to reset it again. Uh, I think we. I think I was doing this because I was having uh, issues re-adding the day column back to the data frame. Uh, so we had to set it as the index uh, column uh, to put it first, and then we did um, dot reset index. I mean, you could in theory uh, use what we did here about adding and removing. We could insert it back in. Um, but yeah, I think I think I remember in the streams I was having some issues trying to do that, and this was the solution I came up with. Um, so you probably don't need this in most instances. If you're working with like um, purely numerical data, this is all you would need. Uh, but because we're working with you know, a day column or, a, 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 you know, a column that isn't numerical, um, we need to do this. And you'll need to re-implant non-numerical columns in because, of course, the impu, uh, the imputer doesn't know how to handle non-numerical columns. Um, so, yeah, that is imputing missing data in a nutshell. Uh, this is kind of a very simple uh, video for what can be quite a complex topic. There are a number of different other... Uh, imputation methods. So there is one that relies on um, linear regression, which is basically where it, it performs linear regression. It just puts uh, the missing values along that line. And there is, uh, I believe it's called a scatastic regression, I think. I'll correct myself in text if I've pronounced that wrong. But essentially what that does is it, it does the same thing with linear regression and it adds like a random error to it to kind of preserve data variability. Um, it's all very complicated, but we're not dealing with that in this. We're just you know, dealing with the most uh, simple imputation methods possible. If you do want to do some extra research um, on uh, other imputation methods, and of course you can, I may do videos. If, you know, if enough people want uh, videos on that, I might do that in the in the future. So let me know if you want to see that. But yeah, that's all I really want to talk about in this video. If you have any questions and. Uh, feel free to leave a comment or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description below. But yeah, with that, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons for being awesome. And I will see you next time where we talk about 
actually graphing. So we're going to be doing some graphing next time. We're going to be talking about the differences between a library called matplotlib and Seaborn and which you should use uh, for graphing data. So I'll see you for that.